Mars, immensely cold, arid on an inconceivable scale and almost airless. Little evidence has ever been found on the existence of biological life on Mars. Apart from some well-documented robot missions, Mars has been out of reach for most of human civilization. That is, until now. Elon Musk has revolutionized the stagnant industry that says we cannot go to a new space race that is tackling the biggest problems to face humanity, on being our possible extinction. One thing is sure, Elon Musk is beyond determined to colonize Mars. It is an almost frenzied obsession born out of necessity. One cannot escape thinking, what does he know that we don't? The spirit with which he founded SpaceX, his rocket company, embodies frustration that NASA wasn't doing enough to get people to the Red Planet, and profoundly concerned that a backup plan for humanity wasn't being developed, if or when Earth becomes an uninhabitable wasteland. Two decades ago, the philosophy from both scientists and non-scientists would have been a, it's just impossible. Today that stagnant attitude is well gone and it no longer seems like such a pipe dream. Elon Musk is out to prove that not only is this a possibility, but that it can be done, and it may just be the reason for the survival of humankind. If the Apophis 2029 asteroid, due to come so near to Earth, there may be valid reasons in the next decade, and this may explain the enthusiasm. Apophis is a 370 meter diameter near Earth asteroid that caused a sensation in 2004 because initial observations indicated a probability of up to 2.7% that it would hit Earth on April 13, 2029. The new worry is that this will be avoided, but its further returns in 2036 and 2068 will see the inevitable. Elon Musk is putting his money where his mouth is. His mission is already moving in full swing towards its target, with regular updates to keep us all in the know. Here we consider the major aspects of his fast-moving Mars colonization plans that when you consider may well be the salvation of humanity. Number 1. Events of 2016 Elon Musk announces a mission to Mars in September 2016 which saw the world begin to dream of the possibility of not only visiting Mars more frequently but inhabiting the Red Planet. It was in that month that Elon Musk first painted us a picture of Mars as a future human settlement. He announced his goal of making man an interplanetary species by colonizing the rusty red planet. This, he says, is part of a grand plan to potentially save mankind from the inevitable extinction that comes from having nowhere but Earth to inhabit. But this was no mere dream. Overcoming two huge obstacles, financial cost and the technology to do so, Musk detailed his plans to establish a civilization there. He figured he could markedly reduce this cost of this venture by applying some already existing and some yet to be designed technologies. To achieve this, he notes that rockets can be made stronger, lighter and most importantly reusable thus considerably cutting the cost of a trip to Mars. This massive new rocket, the Interplanetary Transport System ITS, was built to carry about 100 passengers besides crew members. The rocket will be able to jet off to Mars and back using applied reusable technology, and it should be able to get you and your fellow passengers to your destination in just three months traveling at a speed of about 19,014 miles per hour. After putting out the thought and letting us purr over it, Elon Musk returned a year later to give us a more detailed and better polished copy of his plan to get us to Mars. He had taken the time to do his homework and now he had clearer ideas of how he could achieve his goal. 
The rocket had changed to the smaller and better suited Big Falcon rocket BFR, and there were now clearer plans on how this venture will be funded. Musk's 2017 follow-up announcement at the International Astronautical Congress in Adelaide, Australia did not present any radical shifts from his original plan, but it did show us just how serious he was then about all of it. Musk was turning his space vehicle into an investment opportunity for potential SpaceX partners. This way you would get your dream Martian move and he will get the finance needed to actualize your dream. Just what his level of interaction with SpaceX partners, NASA being one, remains to be seen. Number 2. Transportation of Choice – The BFR The affordability of the mission to Mars will be hugely contingent on the affordability of the rocket involved in the transportation of humans and cargo to the planet. From the very beginning, Musk's plan was hinged on the fact that he could in fact significantly cut down the cost of interplanetary transportation from some billion dollars to a few million dollars. The rocket of choice was initially known as the Interplanetary Transportation System ITS. A few design updates and changes later, it's gone from the ITS to the Mars Colonial Transporter MCR. As of today though, the updated and supposedly final rocket design is the BFR. However, with SpaceX still working on its design mechanism and engineering models, we would not exactly be surprised to find out that this name changes again sometime in the future. But this is not to say that nothing has yet been achieved. SpaceX has already developed several impressive aerospace vehicles, even as it continues to perfect its ultimate target, the spacecraft rocket to get man to Mars. Some of its impressive systems thus far include the Falcon 1, SpaceX's first orbital rocket, Grasshopper, a mini self-landing rocket, Dragon, a cargo spaceship, Falcon 9, an orbital class launcher which is reusable, and Falcon Heavy, heavy lift launcher. So what exactly is the BFR like? For starters, it's a reusable rocket, meaning that it will be able to complete more than one orbital flight. It solves many of the attendant problems associated with the earlier models without compromising on its ability to meet the orbital needs of the Earth, Moon, and Mars. To achieve this goal, the BFR will be protected with a heat shield upon entry into Martian atmosphere at about 7.5 kilometers per second. The BFR is a 378-foot tall system made up of two giant parts. The bottom half is a huge Big Falcon booster which serves to launch the spaceship towards space. When that's done, it will then land itself for reuse at a different time. The top half is an 18-story Big Falcon spaceship which will carry the humans, cargo and anything else which sets out for Mars. This latter part, the BFR spaceship, is billed the hardest part of the system by Musk and continues to be designed and upgraded by SpaceX. Like every SpaceX rocket designed before it, the BFR is big enough to comfortably seat 100 passengers. It will also be used to launch space telescopes and satellites, as well as to deliver cargo to the International Space Station ISS, and snuff out space debris. As of right now, the prototype spaceship is already nearing its development completion. This keeps the company on track to meet their goals of test launching the prototype ship by late 2019. Number 3. Target Date for the First Mars Mission 2022 As it continues in its stride towards man's mission to Mars, SpaceX has so far remained committed to its aspirational timeline which should see the first Mars mission begin in 2022. This is planned to be an uncrewed and unpiloted cargo mission that begins with the launch of the first Big Falcon spaceship into Martian territory. The planets Earth and Mars draw closer to each other once every two years, making the distance to be covered much less than it should be. 
This means that there is a window of time to reach the red planet quicker in each of these cycles. Based on those calculations, the best months to launch the Big Falcon spaceship will be in the summer of 2022. The ship will first be launched into Earth's orbit, using up the bulk of its fuel in the process. Subsequently, several other tanker spaceships will be launched into space to fill the vehicle and replenish it with enough fuel to get it to Mars. It's expected that the refueling process might require up to three space flights, although this is no certainty just yet. The mission will be designed to tackle habitation problems associated with the Red Planet and ensure that certain conditions are in place for the first human visitors. Initial priorities will include confirming water resources, determining future landing hazards, and identifying potential threats to human colonization. SpaceX will also use this opportunity to put in place critical power and mining infrastructure. This will all be critical to the eventual possibility of man making it to the planet. However, it will also set about gathering up the thin Martian air and turning available raw resources into methane fuel and oxygen to enable the spaceships to return launch to the Earth. This latter part is essential to the planned reusability of the BFR for more than one space trip. The goal is to complete the building of the BFR soon enough so that practice orbital test runs can begin late 2019. These short practice trips will help determine the suitability and solidity of the rocket and its ability to launch correctly, which will be vital for engineering corrections ahead of the first Mars mission. The practice orbits will then be followed up by the uncrewed Mars mission, which will determine the BFR's suitability to carrying human life. It's expected that the first trip into Martian territory will take anywhere from a few months to almost a year before the spaceship arrives at its destination. This puts the estimated landing time anywhere from late 2022 to early 2023. It is Musk's hope that at the end of this mission, the Red Planet will be ready, at least to some extent, for the continued presence of man on the planet. This will be yet another big step in Musk's drive to make us an interplanetary species. Number 4. Crewed Mission to Mars 2024 The success of the first mission to Mars will be succeeded by a piloted and crewed mission in 2024 that will carry the first settlers down to their new home. What will they find there? Will they visit the notorious face on Mars? This will ultimately be mankind's big leap towards the colonization of Mars, or maybe recolonization. The Cydonia region may hold the answer to our future, and it will not be surprising if this region is targeted for research. However, before this trip, and consequent upon the 2022 trip, the BFR will launch its first crewed mission. This mission, though, will serve to carry passengers on an estimated week-long trip around the moon. This is an important process in determining the suitability of human life on the BFR. The seats for this trip have already all been paid for by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maizawa. As Musk puts it, he's paying a lot of money for the average citizen to travel to other planets. Assuming this scouting mission goes to plan, like the cargo and supply mission before it, SpaceX will then send the first crews towards Mars. While it is yet unconfirmed how many persons will be making this trip, it's believed that the first trip will likely be an astronauts-only mission. These initial settlers will have a lot of work to do to further improve the habitability of the Red Planet. Upon arrival, they'll be tasked with building a propellant depot which will act as a gas station for space vehicles and a preparatory station for future incoming crews. They will also be required to build blast domes for plant growth as well as other fundamentals needed for human survival. The first ships and fuel plant will then begin to serve as man's first Martian base. It's from this location that any attempts at building a self-sustaining backup civilization will begin. 
Despite these grand plans, it is understood that the first settlers will not have it all rosy in their attempts to get acclimated to a whole different reality. To lighten their load, the first ships are built to carry at least 100 tons of supplies. These supplies will be carefully organized to exceed anything that any crew will possibly need for a year-long stay on Mars. SpaceX says this will help push aside the need for advanced technologies required to inhabit Mars, which are currently non-existent. Again, it's expected that this flight will take anywhere from six to nine months before the first crewed mission arrives on Mars. This will put the possible arrival time at some time in 2025. To eliminate the need and associated complexity, to immediately set about building a habitable habitat on the planet, SpaceX's primary Mars development engineer, Paul Worcester, says that the first spaceships will very likely serve as homes for the first crew members. Number 5. Mars Could Be Made Fit For Human Occupation Mars is hostile. We're no strangers to this fact. This almost airless rock with a super-thin atmosphere which sits some 140 million miles away from Earth is not currently suitable for human life. Maybe it was in the past. If there are structures there and it met a cataclysmic fate, why wouldn't we want to know about this? The air lacks enough oxygen and is polluted by harmful gases and radiation. The soil is poisonous. Water, which is critical to human survival, is currently believed to be trapped beneath the planet's surface in ice deposits. More to that, surface gravity levels are only 38% of current Earth gravity. Light levels stand at 59% of Earth's. Atmospheric pressure is 100 times lower than Earth, which falls under the Armstrong limit. Cosmic radiation levels are much higher. Hazardous global dust storms threaten life. Solar wind penetrates the planet due to a lack of suitable magnetic field. And there is no natural food source. But Musk has a plan to transform the planet into an Earth-like environment. This process, known as planetary terraforming, will involve deliberately transforming Mars into a planet that supports human life, thus making it habitable for man. However, while it's known that the red planet will have to be terraformed over time, the question of how remains a concern. Currently, that remains a major task considering the lack of existing technologies to terraform the planet. Many of the presently proposed concepts for terraforming are prohibitive in nature, either economically or in terms of natural resource costs. For instance, temperature changes can only be made possible using an induced greenhouse warming process. This will involve an increase in atmospheric CO2 which will then force an increase in atmospheric water vapor. With Mars unable to hold enough CO2 to get it warm, this seems to be an impossibility at this stage. Musk has suggested doing the unthinkable to the planet's poles to release the water trapped underneath the surface. Many want to believe this was probably a joke considering the catastrophic effects of this action on any current existing life forms on the planet. Although that plan may be flawed, Musk is yet to state categorically that this will, in fact, be the approach of SpaceX to Martian terraforming. Whatever the case, Mars remains the closest planet in terms of environment and relative proximity to Earth. It's believed that it once had an Earth-like environment in its early history, with a much denser atmosphere and flowing water. Many have claimed the Cydonia region and its monuments was beachfront property at one point. While these rivers have been lost over time, there's always a possibility that they could be induced to return. If concentrated greenhouse gases can be induced, these could increase its atmospheric pressure, which will support the presence of flowing surface water. Indeed, although it does pose major challenges, Mars remains theoretically terraformable. And for all we know, Musk continues to work on identifying the best path to this goal. Number 6. A Lunar Base Will Be Established First 
The directive I am signing today will refocus America's space program on human exploration and discovery," said President Trump during the signing of a new NASA directive that compels the space agency to refocus its efforts on the moon in December 2017. He continued, It marks a first step in returning American astronauts to the moon for the first time since 1972 for long-term exploration and use. This time we will not only plant our flag and leave our footprints, we will establish a foundation for an eventual mission to Mars and perhaps someday to many worlds beyond. The NASA directive is set to send American astronauts back to our planet's only orbiting satellite, the Moon, once again. This will make it the first time American astronauts land on the orbiting satellite since the last of six manned missions to the moons which culminated in the 1972 mission. The idea is that it will give the foundation a base needed for further lunar and planetary exploration. However, before American President Donald Trump signed the new NASA directive that compels the space agency to refocus its efforts on the moon, Barack Obama had made an epic speech and Elon Musk had already set the ball rolling, provoking American presidents to get involved. The SpaceX CEO may be a big dreamer, but if he's proven anything to us so far, it's that he's not afraid of turning his big dreams into masterful realities. We may get to see the pyramids of Cydonia up close one day. Musk's response to that NASA directive was simple. It's high time that humanity went beyond Earth. We should have a lunar base by now. The SpaceX CEO first made public his clear plans of establishing a lunar base sometime soon in September 2017 during the IACC International Astronautical Congress in Adelaide, Australia. This was made known at the same Congress in which he announced the development of a new rocket, the smaller and better BFR. He noted that the multi-purposeful nature of the BFR gives it an advantage as it can perform every space-related task, from launching satellites to servicing the space station, bringing crew and cargo to the ISS, and making trips to Mars or the Moon. He then noted this will enable the creation of a lunar base. As he pointed out during that rousing presentation at the IAC, Musk's plan is already in motion. The BFR's reusable nature and super technologies ensure that it can get to the moon and back. And while he's yet to let us in on any plans to establish a solid base there, he clearly has plans to send space tourists to the moon and back once the BFR is fully operational. Number 7. The Colonization of Mars Will Cost a Fortune It does not take a rocket scientist to figure out just how expensive the planned colonization of Mars will cost. SpaceX and potential future travelers must be prepared to fund this trip, or there won't be one. By Musk's estimates when announcing his 2016 plan to get man to the red planet, it will hypothetically cost you $10 billion for a single ticket to Mars. Certainly, no one will be paying that much to visit a barely habitable planet. Musk plans to cut down costs, but he still estimates that the BFR will cost SpaceX an estimated $10 billion to develop. While this number cannot be reduced, the plan is to cut down the individual cost of going to Mars. The announcement of the BFR and the other SpaceX interplanetary spaceships and rockets before it came with the announcement that it will be big enough to transport up to 100 people all at once. Considering that the most persons ever shuttled into space at once is a lowly eight, this sounds like a major victory. But that's not the best part, because the BFR will be designed to be reusable for multiple trips, and eventually strain on the pockets of individual travelers can be reduced to between $100,000 and $200,000 per ticket by his estimates. Still, establishing a full-fledged, self-sustaining civilization on Mars will require multiple trips to and from the planet. The planet must be fitted with critical infrastructure and technologies. Numerous flights will be needed before the planet may possibly have all the equipment and supplies it needs to sustain human life. 
So even if the rocket costs are pegged at a few hundred thousand dollars per ticket, due to its life cycle and improved and cheaper technology, much more funding will be required. The planet still needs terraforming if life is to be sustained for the long term. And with no idea yet which means of terraforming will be adopted, there is no estimate yet to the cost of that venture. The economic feasibility of this plan is still debatable. However, many agree that this is the next step in human advancement and a very important one at that. The fact that everything needed to run a human colony on the planet will be supplied from Earth makes it more difficult. But Musk, yet again, does have a plan. The very first ship is to set about finding ways to source for fuel from the planet. If that's achieved and water extraction is made possible in no time, then the cost of sustaining life on the planet may be much lower in the long run. For now, Musk continues to seek partnerships and potentially a public-private partnership that will make the funding that much more bearable over time. Number 8. We know it's possible because it's already begun. We may still be in the planning stages of the entire mission to Mars, but giant strides are already being made and we're already beginning to see some incredible things. One such experience involved watching Elon Musk and SpaceX launch the Falcon Heavy rocket into space in February 2018. But this unmanned rocket was not entirely empty. SpaceX launched the Falcon Heavy with Musk's previous personal Tesla as its major occupant. The Tesla itself was fitted with a dummy driver that looks like a spaceman codenamed Starman, as well as an attached camera to help keep it in sight for as long as possible. Falcon Heavy was aimed to shoot beyond Earth's orbit and into Martian orbit. Unfortunately, it overshot its target and is currently on a trajectory of its own orbiting the Sun. As of this moment, the bright red Tesla and Starman the driver, which launched SpaceX maiden Heavy Falcon rocket mission, have made it beyond Mars. Its unique orbit is such that it loops into the Martian orbit in two different locations, while also spending some time in Earth's orbit, getting as close to the Sun as the Earth ever gets. Given the inherent risks associated with maiden flights, launching a valuable spacecraft or satellite was not exactly an option with the Falcon Heavy. According to Musk, he was not ready to stuff his historic rocket with the typical inert mass payload either. Hence the decision to pair his personal Tesla Roadster with Starman because the duo is a lot more fun. Although the Roadster is currently not on the exact trajectory it set out for, it certainly helped SpaceX move forward with its plans. On the one hand, they've been able to test their new rocket technology to identify any kinks to the design and structural integrity. On the other hand, they'll be able to review its flight information to see where they somehow got it wrong with the travel trajectory. The lessons from this flight are sure to help SpaceX in its current ongoing construction of the BFR. The target remains to have the BFR prototype ready for short flights into space and back soon in 2019. With what we've already witnessed, we certainly can't bet against more awesomeness to come. Number 9. What can we look forward to? Elon Musk's big dreams does not just stop at establishing a lunar outpost and colonizing Mars. As is always the case with the SpaceX CEO, he continues to look out for possible ways his all-new technology can be applied even here on Earth to ease human life. One of such ways he's identified is the use of the BFR for global transportation. Yes, you heard that right. Not only does he want to build a reusable rocket for interplanetary transportation, Musk believes that this rocket will also become a fixture in everyday transportation around the Earth. It will be faster than any current means of transport and can take you from one end of the globe to the other in just over half an hour. The BFR will first shoot beyond the Earth's atmosphere and into space before then making the trip to your location and onto the landing pad. According to Musk, this ride will be smooth as silk, 
without any air turbulence, bad weather, or friction. While we're yet to get clear details on how this will work and the costs associated with it, we cannot help thinking of just how revolutionary an idea this is. Just imagine you can take the 8-hour flight from Paris to New York in just 30 minutes, New York to London in 29 minutes, New York to Shanghai in 30 minutes, Sydney to Zurich in 50 minutes. As Musk wisely noted, if we're building this thing to go to the moon and Mars, then why not go to other places on Earth as well? And if we can go to Mars or establish the outpost on the moon, what's to stop us from reaching even further? Musk's dream, after all, is to make us an interplanetary species capable of shuttling from one planet to the next. For now, though, all we can do is sit tight and wait as Musk and his 7,000 strong workforces continue in their efforts to take us to the next level of human evolution. Number 10. Potential Health Hazards Still Abound In one of his IAC presentations, Elon Musk noted that those who are ready to risk it all, those who are not afraid to die, will make for the best candidates for his Mission to Mars program. While he might have come across as being sarcastic, it was most certainly a fair disclaimer. We are all aware that the Red Planet is toxic to humans. Although it may seem slightly like Earth in composition, it is far from anything you've ever had to live with. In fact, simply getting into space exposes you to certain life hazards before you must deal with the toxic atmosphere present in Mars. Those who choose to go ahead into Mars will be faced with increased levels of radiation that could cause, sometimes irreparable, damages to the lungs, eyes, cognitive ability, or even lead to cancer. The Earth's gravity is also significantly higher than anything you'll be facing out there. There is limited gravity in space, simply known as microgravity. When eventually you arrive on Mars, you'll also have to deal with only one-third of the gravity you fight on Earth. This means that your muscles will have much less work to do as you float your way through space. The result is that your muscles will be weakened, perhaps even atrophied, and you'll suffer lots of bone loss. Speaking of which, your heart will not be working as much in space as it does on Earth. This could lead to a decrease in the size of your heart over time. But that's far from all you must contend with. Astronauts have been known to combat with changes to their immune system, resulting from their prolonged stay in space, which increases the odds of falling ill. Likewise, simple illnesses could easily become deadly in zero-gravity environment. But the risk also goes the other way. It is yet unconfirmed whether any life form exists on the Red Planet. If so, how do they survive? More importantly, how will human colonization of the planet affect these life forms? As we continue to make strides towards becoming interplanetary in nature, these are questions we must answer. Imagine finding yourself far above Mother Earth's surface and well beyond our thick blue atmosphere. Imagine looking downwards and seeing for yourself that the Earth is nothing but a tiny blue speck in an empty blackness. How glorious do you think that experience will be? The sense of tranquility, awe, and euphoria that follows will be nothing short of majestic. Now take your imaginations a step further and picture yourself feeling the sharp, crystallized sand of the Red Planet. A step too far? If we are to believe Musk in all of his plans, it certainly is not. The SpaceX CEO may have a reputation of not always keeping to his proposed timelines, but he hardly has a reputation of failure. If you want to be part of those who will be realizing his Martian dreams with him, it's about time you started saving up for the most life-altering human endeavor ever.